by Larry Stenbach hey, from Morgan. First Rule Hello. Media. Oh, how you doing? Hey, doing all right. How are you guys? Just fine. Great. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, but this baseball stuff and is, is, it is fascinating. Tell us, tell us you about know, that. You know, we talked a lot in this tech segment uh, about virtual reality, and you hear it all the time. In fact, you heard it in your numbers segment about uh, Walmart using it for training. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a part of our lives. It's growing, and the technology is getting cheaper. Uh, it is still at an early stage, but something that's amazing and I think is going to be the, a sign of things to come, Intel has signed an agreement with Major League Baseball uh, to provide one game a week in full 4K VR. Now, what, VR is virtual, virtual reality. reality. And what, what, this, uh, what this is going to allow people to do, currently just with the higher-end Oculus headset, the company that Facebook owns, uh, it's going to allow one game a week users to watch via the Oculus app as though they're in the the baseball stadium, so it's like they're sitting See, in the seat. You don't seat. Have to pay for those expensive exactly. nachos. You don't. I, I can eat my own <laughs> you nachos. Eat your own nachos at home, <laughs> made inexpensively. And, but you know what? You can see because it's going to be like you're sitting in the actual seat. You can see the people live. The concessionaires walking down next to you. You're able to actually wow. switch seats on the fly. So if you don't like where you're sitting right now, you can switch to a different seat. And it's a fully produced VR broadcast. For, for people with this. And they're, it's strictly testing, but they're going to do one game a week. And actually, the uh, it starts June 6th with the Cleveland Indians versus the Colorado Rockies. Uh, but actually, the fourth game they're doing in VR is the St. Louis Cardinals versus the Diamondbacks. So, so it's, it's the actual game. It's the actual game, but it's going to feel like you're sitting in the stadium. And it's even better than that because you'll be able to look up where, like, the screen would be in the actual stadium. Mm -hmm. And there's actually, like, the full broadcast there. So you can look down at the people playing or look up at the full broadcast. And you're able to do things like have stat overlays. So you might look at a player and have the ability to turn on stat overlays, and immediately you can see stats of each of the players as they're moving along on the field, as though, again, you're sitting right oh there. Will the it stadium. allow me to order a beer or a soda from the <laughs> vendor? <laughs> that it won't, but I'm sure that there's going to be tie-ins eventually to things yeah. like Papa John's and things right. like that that can deliver it to your home. That's right. But, I mean, I think this is an amazing direction that venues are taking because there's so, it's so hard to get people down to the stadium to pay those you know twenty dollars mm -hmm. for nachos it's a, it's a hard sell mm -hmm. but what, what's an easier sell is the uh stadium is being able to sell one seat ten thousand times mm -hmm. right. so they can sell the same seat right. you know is infinite number of times collect profit they don't have to clean up after people uh it, it's great and same thing with concert venues i mean i foresee and this is why facebook oh, yeah people ask me why do facebook pay two billion dollars for a virtual reality company is it because we can walk around Facebook? It's like, no, that's that's not really what they're looking for. They're looking for the concert venues, the next generation. Like, if you want to go see it. That would be awesome. Right. So yeah. well, why not have front and center of right. any concert you want the best from your living room? Mm -hmm. And it really feels like you're there. And the concert venues could make money from wherever. You don't have to be in St. Louis to you know go to the St. Louis concert. You mm -hmm. could be in L.A. And there's always, I mean, you're, there are going to be some, uh, what do you call, you know, uh, taking of people that would normally go, but you know they're going to sure. be those people that always want to go to the game. It Absolutely. was a lovely evening the other night; had a great time. Weather was great, but there's some nights I'd love to have that experience, and I just mm. can't make it down to the ballpark. Or the, for right. those people that are in states, we're so lucky; we have everything right here. Having grown up where I did, out in the middle of nowhere, sometimes you know you just couldn't get to a venue, and um, mm. this is a great opportunity. I think it, I think it only helps the venues, like right. you're saying. Like the people always want that experience of going down with friends to the ballpark, mm -hmm. but. This way, like you said, it allows people from a thousand miles away to buy tickets at the ballpark, which normally wouldn't spend money at the ballpark. So, what about the audio on that before we get off this? So, uh, that, are, is there some kind of are we listening to a feed from MLB or from a local broadcast? Yes. So you have options. Mm -hmm. You know, they have actual audio where the seats would be, so it sounds like where mm -hmm. you are in the seats. But you could also stream in directly to the broadcast, which I think was what most people would do. They want to hear the broadcast and kind of see uh, what's going on from the seat. Really, really exciting stuff, though. I, it's something that you got to try out if you get oh, an opportunity. Yeah. Tell so, us, right. tell the, the listeners, mm -hmm. how do they, where do they go and try to figure this out? Well, right now, again, it's a little bit of an early stage. These these VR headsets, like the Oculus and the HTC Vive, are about seven hundred dollars, and you need about a fourteen hundred dollar computer to run them. <laughs> okay. So right now, it's about a two thousand yeah. dollar process. Right. It's not like the little uh, ones you put in your phone, but the phones are catching up. Mm -hmm. And so I imagine within a year or so, it's going to be pretty much everywhere. If you want to try it out right now, though, I know Microsoft has a store in the mall, the St. Louis Galleria mm -hmm. Mall, and you can go try out their headset. I know we tried it here, Kelly yeah, Jackson. Oh, and that it's, was awesome. It's one of those things that 
I can tell you how cool it is all day long, but until you, you try it, it, you don't really understand how yeah. cool it is. So, yeah, uh, very neat stuff. Hey, what's the next one? All right, moving moving right along. Uh, kind of interesting story. Uh, there's a big uh, geeky conference called Computex going on right now over in uh, Taipei. It's a big computer conference where they announce a lot of new things in phones and computers. And I thought the most interesting story was Intel's come out with a little card. Called, they're calling the compute card that's the size of a credit card. Mm -hmm. And it has a full computer in it. And the, the idea is that you could have dumb things like a TV or a refrigerator or a car. Imagine what, and you could, instead of having to upgrade the car when it's time to upgrade the components in it, you just literally put in this credit card size thing and upgrade that as you go. So it basically allows dumb things to be smart and then upgrade just a little credit card size thing as opposed to upgrading the full computer or full device and could, how, could they do that like for that? me uh, you know, i wish i wish they could do that for all yeah. of us right just get an upgrade <laughs> the, what would something starting, like this yeah. cost? Uh, you know they're starting to launch it this week but uh, they're, they're estimating depending on what the computer is that you're replacing hundred dollars to four hundred dollars depending on what it is and again it's meant mainly for smart appliances things you you know, you might want to have a smart refrigerator in the future, but right. you don't want to replace your refrigerator every couple of so years if your software came along. Cheaper, an hopefully. interesting way of doing it, yeah. uh, but it's one of those things you kind of have to see. It's oh. really interesting. Well, interesting. we're very lucky. We have a very smart Larry Stenbach who yes. joined us. And thank you very Love much, Larry. Segments. First rule, media. Yeah, and looking forward to hearing you next week. See you it guys. is uh, 7.50.